Well, today, I want you to meet someone that will change your outlook on life. I want you to meet one of the most important persons in your whole journey of this lifetime. I want you to meet a person that will truly, through this experience, transform you and change you in an amazing way. I believe that in meeting this person will help you move in a new direction. Who is this new person? You. That's right. Today, I want you to meet you. There's nothing important than you meeting you. And let's really discover who we are. Let's discover who we are and meet ourselves, some of us for the very first time. You see, so many people in this world are saying, oh, I'd love to know about me. So I'm going to do everything I can. I'm going to search out my ancestry to maybe learn more about who I am. Someone else may say, you know what? I'm going to study my body because I just really want to know how my body works. This is who I am. Another person may say, let me look at my culture, my society, family. Let me just study all of this. This is going to help me learn who I am. Oh, but let me tell you this. You are not this physical being. And though you may look at your ancestry and where your family line came from, though you may study your body and its physical attributes and learn more about how to attribute great health and strength to it, and though you may look at your society and your culture and may try to figure out more and more and learn more from that, let me tell you, you're not that physical body. You're something so much more. You are a spiritual being. I want you to meet you that spiritual being that you are. Each and every Sunday, as we said today, we say this beautiful phrase, we know that we are spiritual beings having a physical experience in this world. We say that. We say it over and over again. But do we really understand it? Do we live from that perspective of saying, I am a spiritual being. This is who I am. Understanding more and more of who we are, that our true nature is that of being spiritual. Now, the scripture tells us, and I can't emphasize this over and over again, that we're created in the image and likeness of God. I know people say, yes, I hear that. I've read that. I keep thinking that the image and likeness of God is something physical. So I keep thinking we must be looking like God, or there must be something physical to that which is of God. But there's nothing physical about this at all, because there is no physical image of God. God does not have a physical image. God is a presence. God is this wonderful energy. God is infinite intelligence. In fact, the Ten Commandments invite us not to create a graven image, a picture, an image, have an image in mind of what God is. Because in doing so, we limit our understanding of who and what God is. Down through time, we've seen movies where some character actor portrays God. We begin to think of God as a human or some sort of being that we can talk to. So we're beginning to think, oh, there's got to be a physical entity somewhere in this world. So I'm thinking that the image and likeness must be that we too are looking like God. Oh, we look like God. But from a standpoint of the essence, the spirit, the very character of who we are. We're created in the image and likeness. That means the very essence of you, the soul of you, the character of you is created in the very same likeness of the divine. We're created in this, so I want you to just stop and say hello to your true nature. That's right. Stop and say hello to your true nature. Join with me. Let's say it together. Hello to my true nature. We're now introducing ourselves to the very first time to understanding who we are, our true nature, the beauty of who we are as individuals. We need to say hello to self-acceptance, accepting yourself for that who you are, for that which you are, accepting yourself fully with great joy and great freedom, saying this I know to be true, this I know who I am. Say hello to your authentic self. In today's world, we're talking a lot about, oh, we need to be authentic. But to be authentic is to be authentic to the awareness of your true nature, divine, spiritual, a wonderful essence created in the character 
The very likeness of love, grace, compassion. The very likeness and image of goodness, forgiveness, kindness. That's your true nature. For so often we haven't exuded that or celebrated that because we haven't realized, wait a minute, that's who I really am. Everything else is, well, it's not who I am. You are not anger. You are not frustration. You are not fear. For your true nature is that of love and compassion and of grace and of true sense of perfect peace. We often try to present something that is other than the real self. So we look like we're putting out some sort of facade, some sort of image to the world, rather than understand, wait a minute, who is the true me? What is the true me? Do I understand the true essence of my life? That is this divine essence, this wonderful, beautiful spirit that's within you. And when our consciousness and our thinking, our very awareness expresses from its true nature, well, let me tell you, something wonderful happens. Grace. That's right. When we're expressing from our true nature, we are people of great grace. We're so kind and gracious to one another. When we are expressing from that true nature, fully aware of it, you wake up in the morning and say, you know what, I realize my true character is that of love and kindness. And today, I will express that. I will exude that. I will show that in all ways. When I walk into a room, what people will be experiencing is my true nature, the true character of who I am. I'm going to walk into the room and I'm going to offer grace, compassion, patience, kindness. This is what's going to exude from me. But what happens when we are not fully aware of this? We may express unforgiveness, fear, anger, resentment, and so on. That's not our true nature. That's our lesser self. That lesser self is what, that which is caught up in the physical world, caught up in the day-to-day. -day. And I see so many people in this world living from that perspective, believing that to be their true nature, believing that that was their true nature is that of this physical world around us and all of its limitations. Because from the spiritual, we live in a realm of unlimited abilities, capabilities, experiences. Unfortunately, we find so many people coming from the perspective of limited living, and they're living from this idea every single day of limited experience, limited knowledge, or thinking that they themselves are limited in their skills. And again, they've forgotten their true nature, and it's time to wake up and say, hello, this is who I am. Hello, I need to once again introduce my true divine nature and understand that it's not one of limitation whatsoever, but unlimited possibilities, and that's what's dwelling within you. That's your true character to wake up in the morning and say, today I live unlimited possibilities. I move in the realm of all kinds of opportunities unfolding for my highest and best. That's living your true self. That's being authentic. That's expressing self-acceptance. What happens is we get so attracted to this material world and its five senses. So consequently, we're always thinking from that perspective. We're thinking of, well, well, wait a minute, what's real for me is that which I can touch, that which I can taste, that which I can feel, that which I can see, that which I hear, that's what's really real. Oh, unfortunately, those are just manifestations of what's going on inside of you. Because from within, the world manifests without. From within, it shapes and it forms all the reality of the day-to-day -day experience of your life. So when you think, what I hear is fear. What I see is chaos. What I smell is that I'm just concerned that things are not smelling fragrant and beautiful. What I smell stinks. What I think in this world is full of all kinds of challenge. Ah, but we're not operating from our true self then. We're not living from that true character of the divine within us. And so quite often then we feel limited or separated. We feel removed from one another. And we act that way. We act as if, well, you're not connected to me. I'm not related to you. 
We feel so limited. We feel separated. And we often feel all alone. We feel that there's no connection to God and no connection to one another. But in our true connection, our true character, love unites us. We're united in love with God, and we're united in that expression of love with one another. And how beautiful that is. And once we found this true character and live from that perspective each day, we find, oh, it's so easy to feel connected, not separated, but a sense of oneness, being so one with one another. Because the true connector is love. The true character is that of the divine essence. You see, this greater self is the spiritual realm. How do we know that? Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is within What is this kingdom of heaven he's talking about? It's the divine presence of God. It's within you. It's always been with you. It's always been there. You were created in the image and likeness of the divine presence from your birth, from your first breath, from that first moment of life in this world, that first moment of consciousness you have been able to experience the presence of God. It's been with you. It's with you. It's in you. It's around you. It's always working for you. When we understand that, we think, wow, this is the greater self. This is who I am called to be. And nothing can be more important than to discover this highest self. Because when we embrace it fully and we say, this is how I live, this is how I move, this is how I have my being, this is how I exist in this world, I exist from my true character and expression of the divine. Sadly, people go through life and they live from the lesser perspectives, the lower level of self, the lesser understanding, and that is that ego. And that embraces fear and separation and creates all kinds of challenges. When we're living from that lesser perspective, oh, we minimize our abilities to make a difference and to shine in this world. So let me tell you about you. Can I tell you about you? Yes. Now, I know some amazing things about you, and it's not because I have a crystal ball, or I've read some cards, or that I've seen your palms. It's not because of that. I can tell you something amazing about you. Because this is the ageless truth. This is the very truth of the ancient scriptures unfolding for us and telling us this. That you are amazing. You're fantastic. You're beautiful. You're intelligent. You're loving. You're kind. You're inclusive. You're caring. You're forgiving. You're patient. And you are gracious. How do I know? How do I know? Because I know that the kingdom of heaven dwells in you. I know that the presence of God is dwelling in you. I know it, and today I want you to know it. I want you to recognize. I want you to recognize this divine presence at work within you, for this is your true self. You don't have to be a psychic. You don't have to be a palm reader. You don't have to be any of these things to know these things. You just have to understand the power of just being still and knowing. Oh, how beautiful it is to be in those quiet moments of prayer. And in those moments of centering deep within, you can feel the very love of God. Oh, it's gorgeous. To feel, to rest, to be at perfect peace. And knowing that that divine love is exactly how you have been created. The you, the real you, that is truly you. Oh, we know this physical body. What's going to happen to it when you die? Do you take it with you? You don't. It's left behind. Why? Because it's the container of the real you, the character of the divine, is that which ascends and leaves and transcends this body, leaves this world. So the real you is something so much more powerful. You are the chip off the old block, you might say. You know, quite often people will say that. Oh, you're just like your dad. You're a chip off the old block. Oh, you're just like your mom. I see your mom in you. People may say that often. And how about they say, You're a chip off the old block. I see God in you. I see the character of God in you. I see love being revealed. I see the very essence of all that is divine being revealed as you speak, act, and move in this world. How beautiful I see you have discovered your true self, and you know who you are. 
how beautiful it is for you are this greater self in this world and this greater self in this world has a purpose, a divine purpose, a purpose to be a light for the world, a purpose to reveal. That's right. I was shopping the other day looking for light bulbs. I found a wonderful brand, Reveal. It's called the Reveal brand. I love it. Do you know that in 2001, they introduced this GE Reveal light bulb that filters out all kinds of yellow light or clouded light and reveals and illuminates natural illumination. Wow, you're a Reveal light bulb. That's right. You're called to reveal the natural illumination. Reveal who you really are. Oh, you're not this fear and separation feelings. You're not limitation. You're not that which is stress and worry. That's not who you are. Your true character to be revealed is a true nature that illuminates, shines so bright, the very essence of God, love, grace, forgiveness, mercy. We are here then to shine. This is our purpose. That's why we're called City of Light, because we're this great community, this community of coming together that feels like a metropolitan city, shall we say, with all of its ministries and outreach and activity, all of its insights and exchanges. And it's a city of light, illumination of the divine character of God being revealed. That's our purpose. That's our mission. And we invite you to join us in that. That's what we're called to do, each and every one of us. Oh, but don't get distracted. You see... We're called to grow and evolve and change and even gain spiritual understanding. But quite often, we get distracted. We hear that passage quoted from time to time. You're in the world, but not of the world. From John chapter 17, Jesus tried to express this in his prayer. A beautiful prayer. I encourage you to read John chapter 17. It's filled with such a loving expression of the character of God that Jesus desires to be expressed, not only through him, but through each and every disciple and through you. This is the prayer Jesus prayed, that we might be in the world, but not of the world. In the world as a spiritual being, this presence of the character of God, but not of the world in its sense of the physical limitations. Not of the world in its fear and stress that it constantly wants to embody. Not of the world, but understanding that we are called then to be a light radiating in the world. I think it's really important that the church move out into the world, you know? Quite often, people would say, well, we're spiritual, and we need to just harbor together, be in a monastic environment, maybe close off ourselves from everyone else. We don't want to send our children out into the world, so we're going to homeschool them and keep them. What happens is we limit the shining brilliance, the illuminating, illuminating light of the presence of God. Instead, let's make it our purpose that every day we're going to shine bright for the world. We're going to move out into the world, but not of the world. So when we're referencing the world, we're referencing this physical a world around us. But knowing that we are higher and greater self of the true character of God is this spiritual understanding that the true essence of us is unlimited and able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. So to do so, we must remain focused. We must remain focused and not let this world distract us and shape our character around the physical, but allow our character to constantly be revealed through the spiritual every day, saying, I shake off this physical world. I let it go. I don't want this physical world and all its limitations to define me. I am living from the true essence of myself. And so I understand this, but it's quite challenging. There is a passage of Scripture that says, Enter ye in by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate that leads to destruction. Straight is the way that leads to life. You see here, it's simply describing for us this narrow gate being more challenging for us, requiring us to do some spiritual work of discipline, being focused to not allow the day-to-day -day stuff distract us or take us away from the true self that we are and understanding our nature 
and living from that perspective. Wide is the gate that's easy. And we find so many people living, oh, you know, the spiritual work and its call of discipline within my life, of putting forth effort, of day-to-day concentration and awakening to my focus and constantly being conscious of God all the time. Oh, that seems so tiresome. How about I just travel the wide gate? Just make it easy. And I just do whatever I want to do. And I welcome the physical world. And I welcome fear. And I welcome stress. And I become so worried. I become insecure and frightened. I don't really believe in who I am. And I don't accept myself. So I'm going to put up some fake facades. And I'm going to do some things to kind of protect myself. I'm going to do all this kind of stuff because what? Well, you're traveling what you may think is the easier road. But oh, the narrow gate. The narrow gate is being in the world, but not of it, being not conformed to this world of limitation, but being that which shines and radiates a light in that environment. I love this passage, just be not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed, transformed, changed, renewed at all times within our life. Our day-to-day experience is that of renewal. Every day, waking up and saying, I want to be renewed today. I want to be refreshed today. I want to be born again today. I want to be born anew in this awareness, in this consciousness, in this way of thinking. The way I thought yesterday is good for yesterday, but today, I want a fresh, new experience. Let me be transformed today, right here, right now. That's what I want. So I want to remind you this. If you haven't met your higher self today as a day to meet it, to encounter it, to awaken to it, to introduce the you to the you, that's right, to the more powerful you, because this true you acknowledges the Christ within, the Christ within. Do you understand that? I don't think we do in today's Western environment. In our Western world of Christianity in particular, we've associated Christ only and solely with Jesus, thinking maybe even that's Jesus' last name. We often say Jesus Christ, and we just include it all as if that's first and last, and that's how we refer to him. It's a name more than anything else. Oh, but let me describe what the Christ really is. Jesus is the person. Jesus is the one who walked this earth, taught and shared the message. The Christ was not the person but the degree of stature that Jesus attained and that we all can attain. That's right. The Christ is a consciousness, an awareness, an awakening that we all can attain. The Christ is that true nature, that true self, a true essence within us. And we can achieve that. And when we do, we discover a more powerful you. That's right. Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, it says. So let this very thinking, this consciousness that Jesus attained, he attained the level of the Christ, and you too can attain that level. You think, well, only Jesus can do those things, and we've attributed out lots of things to, well, let Jesus do it, because only Jesus can do it. Don't try this at home. Don't even bother. And how crazy it is to even think that way when he's our great example our way shower, our teacher, the one who has been helping us to understand down through the ages how to live this life by the example he lived. And so it is that as he attained the Christ and people re- proclaimed to him when he asked, who do you say that I am? You are the Christ. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we turned to one another and asked, who do you say I am? And everyone resounded, you, you, you. You, you are the Christ. You're the revelation. You are the one who has attained this degree of stature that we can call our own, that we can attain, that says, I understand the divine working in me, through me, around me, and for me. I get this. This is my true nature. This is who I really am. And when I'm acting otherwise, I'm acting in a way that's not true to how I'm created and how I'm meant to be. I want to live an authentic life. I want to live a life that I'm true to 
to myself. I want to live a life that's full of self-acceptance of who I am and created to be. There's nothing more important then than to discover your highest self. And I want to ask you today, are you living the real you? Are you living your highest self? I want to encourage you that you don't let life pass by and you live life with regrets, regretting. I didn't live my highest self. I regret missing out on the power, the presence within. I regret I lived a life thinking I was totally separate from God, removed. I regret I lived a life thinking I was separate from one another. I regret that I missed out on the real me, the real, the genuine. And so I want to encourage you that you don't live a life of regrets. Abe Lincoln offered this to us. In the end, it's not the years in your life that counts, but the life in your years. So as you journey, as you live this life, it's the life that you live in this years that count. How you live is so crucial. It's so important that you begin to understand today from this point forward, I know who I am. I have introduced myself to myself. I am a child of God. I am created in divine image. And so I have the freedom, the right. I have the power and the ability to express love in every situation, no matter what's going on. I have the ability to be patient, kind, compassionate, generous, caring, inclusive. I have the ability to do all those because that's who I am. Today, there's nothing more important than you meeting you. Amen.